Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we are doing a final profile, analytics profile, on Nick Bosa. In terms of his production data, his athleticism data, to give you some idea of what he could become at the next level. Uh, so if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. And let's get to his profile. So as many people should know, based on the production videos I've done in the past, um, Nick Bosa has a lot of question marks. And I do understand that there are a lot of fans of him, but please listen to the entire video until I get to the end so that I can drive home my point a little bit further. Uh, but again, a lot of people have Nick Bosa as a consensus number one overall pick. A lot of people say that it's not even close, but based on data, there's a lot of concerns here that I want to unpack. So starting with his production data, he had a 16.65 solo tackle score, a 44.93 sack score, and a 51.81 uh, tackle for loss score. Bosa's biggest issue, Nick Bosa's biggest issue, is that he has just not been that productive at Ohio State. Period. And I do understand that people are going to make uh, arguments of, they're going to make like single game production or every game that he was a starter in, he was this productive. And look at his first games of the year, right? I mean, he was great th those first like six weeks or so or five weeks. You know, he was fantastic. Why don't you just prorate his data that way? And the issue with that is, is that I just don't do that because again, the, the season, I, whenever I do production profiles, I need to have at least 10 or more games um, to put it into my system. And if they have less than that, it's just not a large enough sample to add that to the data set. So the only sample I really have is from his, not 2018, but 2017. And in 2017, he was just this productive. He was just kind of average and below average in a lot of ways at the position because he was mainly just a rotational guy. Um, so this is the biggest concern here is the production uh, on top of that uh, when you look at his athleticism data he actually tested pretty well uh, 66.28 in terms of explosion 63.98 in terms of speed and 92.82 in terms of flexibility for his size uh, those are all great numbers those all pretty much hit the pro bowl thresholds at the position uh, when you're looking at his explosion score his uh, flex his uh, speed score and his flexibility score all those numbers are really great uh, you know, they pretty much hit, you know, the Pro Bowl threshold. And the only area where he had some concern is, you know, he's a little bit below the average All-Pro and Pro Bowl score in terms of his explosion and speed, but it's still a very good profile. But the production, again, is a major issue. And just to give you an example, uh, this year, of course, I'm going to be doing production comps on players. So I kind of look at players who were similar production at the college level, uh, and to not, not to make a direct comparison, but more so to show you like this is a potential career arc for this type of player. And when it comes to Nick Bosa, the only real player I could really see, because there was not a lot of starters there, was Barkevius Mingo. You know, Mingo was a guy that had below average solo tackle data, just like Nick Bosa, had average sack data and average tackle for loss data. Um, so again, Mingo, and Mingo was also a great athlete as well. So... Again, production-wise, there are just major concerns with Nick Bosa. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at athleticism, this is the positive, of course, is that, you know, crazy enough, Nick Bosa tested almost identical to Joey Bosa. So, again, that athleticism that you're seeing on film with Nick Bosa does show up. You know, like, I do think that I this is why people are excited about him, is that he's basically as athletic as his brother, um, and, and again, there's a lot of similarities to the, you know, with both of them because of, you know, being brothers and those, those sort of factors. But the problem is, is Nick Bosa is not Joey Bosa. Nick Bosa is Nick Bosa. And just to give an example, this is what Joey Bosa did at Ohio State during his career. He put up an 85.86 solo tackle score, an 81.67 sack score, and an 87.81 tackle for loss score. Joey Bosa was just productive, you know, he, he, he had great athleticism traits and he was extremely productive at Ohio State. Nick Bosa is athletic, we can, you know, we confirm that, but he's not productive. And this goes back to sort of the issue 
that I keep running into with Nick Bosa is, and something that I, that is hard for people to wrap their heads around for some reason. I don't know why. Nick Bosa does have injury issues. Uh, you know, he's someone who tore his ACL when he was in high school. Um, he's someone who, of course, ended 2018 with a core injury. Uh, you know, he's he's someone that has not proven that he can stay healthy for an entire season and be productive at that in his entire career, let alone the fact that the year that Nick Bosa was actually rotating in and being productive, the year that Joey Bosa, when he was at Ohio State, I mean, when Joey Bosa was at Ohio State, he was dominating. He was dominating that year. He wasn't rotating. He wasn't sharing reps with some other players. He was dominating. He was the guy. Nick Bosa had to rotate with other players. You know, this this fantastic this 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 edge rusher that everybody considers to be uh, the best edge rusher in the class, uh, the second coming of Joey Bosa. This guy had to rotate with a lot of prospects that are fringe reserve type players at the NFL level. He was forced to rotate with them. And I understand that people are going to talk about coaching and, you know, there's so many different things that unpack with Nick Bosa. But the bottom line is this. Everybody is super excited about Nick Bosa. And I think a lot of that excitement comes from the fact that he played at Ohio State and that he's related to Joey Bosa and that there are similarities in terms of athleticism. Uh, there are similarities in terms of how they look. Like there are definitely these similarities here and there. But when you actually look at them on paper, when you actually look at their career arc, because what I think people keep not understanding is a lot of what you do at the college level will show up at the NFL level. A lot of the same behaviors that you had at the college at, in college will show up at the NFL level. I mean, these these people are are almost adults. Most of them, you know, most of these guys are almost adults. So, and definitely, people can change. People can improve, but not everybody improves. Not everybody changes. Some people stay the same. Josh Gordon had uh, lots of drug problems when he was in uh, college. And he has lots of drug problems now in terms of Josh Gordon. Nick Bosa has a proven track record of injuries, ACL tear, and then of course having that core injury, you know, that prevented him from starting the entire season back in 2018. What's his NFL career going to look like? So these are the big question marks these are the big these are the big issues i have with nick bosa and again it has nothing to do with his talent because he's definitely a very talented player but as i've said many times many times on this channel there are some times when the data is screaming at you it speaks louder than words sometimes in terms of data that's how i like to put it you know sometimes the data speaks louder than words and in this particular case, data speaks louder than words. It just does. It speaks louder than film. Uh, so if he goes on to have a really long career and productive career, great. You know, if he does that, because he definitely has the athleticism traits necessary to be a fantastic edge at the NFL level. Um, and I'm not denying him that at all. But if you think that this is the second coming of Joey Bosa, then I think you'll be sorely disappointed with what he actually becomes at the NFL level. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. Now, on top of that, please join my Patreon channel today if you are a big fan of this channel, if you like the content that's coming up here, if you want more content, uh, for example, be sure to go to my Patreon page and make a $5 donation today. Every little bit helps and keeps this channel running and keeps uh, the videos coming. So uh, check that out as well. And with all that stuff out of the way, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace!